Okay, now hopefully bonds are starting to make a little bit of sense, but let's continue on. You'll see here journal entry at issuance, and we're talking about BIC and accrued interest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you pretty much anything and everything they ever test you on. They don't usually test this much of it, but I'm going to give it all to you just so we're having a good time. Now, as we go through this, there are certain things that fall into our journal entry, and here's what we're going to look at. And I'm going to make it like a one, two, three, four, and then we'll go through the details. So here's what our journal entry will basically look like. We'll have a one, two, three, four, five, or five. Mmm, very interesting. Yeah, boy. All right, first thing we do, credit, bonds payable. And that's because you always know what bonds payable is. Hit bonds payable for the face amount. The second thing we may have is called accrued interest payable. And this is something that is not tested on every exam, but it does periodically show up. So this is going to be an amount for accrued interest that we're going to have that we may end up needing in order to figure out what is our accrued, accrued interest. And this is for interest that occurs between interest dates. So what that means is, let's say I'm going to pay you interest, but the problem is a certain amount of time has already gone by. So here, for example, is the time right here's our time and let's say for example we are looking at you know if you bought the bond on January 1st and at December 31st I'm gonna owe you what I'm gonna owe you 12 twelfths of the year okay not a problem so at the end I owe you what a million eight percent eighty grand so I'm gonna owe you eighty thousand bucks but let's say you bought it here on April 1st April Fool's Day April Fools. Hello, April Fools. So how much time has gone by? January, and you're allowed to bring your fingers to the exam. January, February, March 31st, three months. So there's nine months left. So now at the end of the year, you're going to still pay me how much? You're still going to pay me 80,000 bucks. Why? Because it's way too much work at the end of the year to go, okay, you bought it January, here's your 80. You bought it when? April 1st, that's three quarters, here's your 60. You bought it when? July 1st, that's half a year, here's 40. Way too much work. So here's what I'll do. Instead, I'll jack that accrued interest into the purchase price, and then at the end of the year, I can just give everybody 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80. Oh, so with accrued interest, what I'll say is, you're buying it here, how much time has already been accrued? Three twelfths or one quarter? So I'm gonna say, okay, you owe me a quarter of 80 or 20 bucks. Then at the end, I'm gonna pay you 80. What have you really earned? You've really earned 80 minus the 20. You've earned 60, which is from here to here. Makes sense. Let's say you buy it on July 1st. Then half the year's gone by, I'll charge you 40. At the end, I pay you 80. What have you earned? 40. So for me, I'm gonna get that money up front. Let's just say it was whatever, 60 bucks. So I would credit accrued interest payable 60 because it's a liability, but I'm also gonna have some cash and that cash would go right here as 60. So I basically debit cash, credit accrued interest payable. Then at the end of the year, accrued interest payable, and then I'll give you the 80 bucks. So I'm going to give you 80 of the accrued interest payable. 60 of it was money that you paid me up front. So you're really only earning whatever the difference is, 20 bucks. So my real interest expense is only 20, not 80. Why? Because 60 of it you prepaid. So again, that's called accrued interest payable. That's what we're looking at as far as the amounts. So again, I want you to kind of understand the accrued interest payable as far as what the amount is, how it fits in, and how it all ties together. So that's a really important concept as far as accrued interest payable. Then what we're going to have is debit cash. Now the debit to cash, that's going to be either for what we call the present value. Remember way over here where we calculated the present value of 924280 So that would be either the present present value, or remember I said they say the bonds were issued at 101 or 98, 101%, 98. So whatever that is, that's how much cash I'm going to charge you. So I'm going to put here percent of face or your present value calculation, plus I'm going to add in the accrued interest, which you just paid me up front, minus something called BIC. And this BIC is called bond issue cost that I'm going to set up as basically a deferred charge. Basically, it's a deferred charge or it's going to be, in a sense, a non-current asset. It's an, uh, an expense that I'm going to amortize over the life of the bonds. And with your bond issue cost, if you turn the page, 
You'll see it talks about accrued interest payable and I give you an example there so you can kind of play with it and work through it. I also include bond issue costs, BIC, but bond issue costs, you're going to take these and you're going to amortize them straight line over the period that the bonds are outstanding. So the period that the bonds are outstanding. Now this is important. Let's say they're five year bonds. How many months is five years? Five times 12, 60. But let's say I don't issue the bonds for three months. How long are the bonds outstanding? 60 minus three, 57. I would then amortize them over 57 months. So it's the period that the bonds are outstanding. What is included in there? If they ever ask you, it's usually D, all of the above. But what's included? Printing, engraving, legal, accounting, underwriter commissions, promotion, Promotion costs, like printing the prospectus to get people to buy the bonds. All of those are considered bond issue costs, and again, we're going to amortize them over the life of the bonds, the period that the bonds are outstanding. So again, straight line over the period of the time that the bonds are outstanding. That's the way that we're going to amortize those out. That is called your bond issue cost. So as we look at the calculation, again, you'll see credit bonds payable for phase, credit accrued interest payable, debit cash, and then your debit to BIC, which we're going to amortize over the life of the bonds. Now, at this point, we have a plug. What is your plug? If it's a debit, it's a discount. If it's a credit, it's a premium. So discount or premium, that's going to be the plug. So one more time, credit bonds payable for phase, credit accrued interest, which they don't usually test, debit cash, debit BIC, difference is a discount or premium.